Hi, in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how you can authenticate your application using Auth0. So we're going to cover how you can create your application in the Auth0 dashboard. Then we're gonna see how you can configure our application provider. You will learn how to log in using Auth0, how to log out, and how to get an access token for your API requests so that you can ensure that your endpoints are authenticated and that your user has the authorization rights to access them. And you will be amazed how easy and straightforward it is to work with this library. So let's jump right in. Code with Sloba. And as I already said, we're gonna use Auth0 to authenticate our application here. So make sure to go to Auth0.com and to create account. So you can just click here on sign up and I already created my account using Google here. So I can close this tab and I will open up my dashboard. So once you have created an account, you will get a dashboard something like this. So what you wanna do now is you wanna create your application. So make sure to go over to here on the left side and click on the applications tab and you can click on the applications here. And now you can create your application by clicking here, create application. And you need to choose an application type here. For this tutorial, we're gonna use single page web applications. So you have different frameworks here like Angular, React, and Vue. And for the name of the application, let's say tutorial. And now just click on the create. It will take a couple of seconds and our application has been successfully created. Now if you want, you can get a quick start information clicking on the framework that you're using. But also we have here as this settings tab and we're gonna use that settings tab to set up our application. So here we have domain in client ID and this is what we're gonna be sending to the provider. So let's do that. And now the first thing that I wanna do is to install the library that will help us to easily manage Auth0 using React. So let's open up a terminal and let's install this package. npm install and the name of the package is Auth0 slash Odd zero react like so install it i have already installed this package so i'm not gonna but you just hit enter and you should install it like so and now in the index file of your application we're gonna set up the configuration for the odd zero so first let's import the odd provider so import odd zero provider and we're gonna wrap our application using this provider and to pass a couple of parameters. So let's call the auth provider and let's wrap our application like so. Now there are three things that we need to provide to our auth provider. The first thing is domain. The second thing that we need is client ID. And the third one is authorization params. For the domain, we can head over to our application settings and we can just copy the domain URL and just paste it here. We can copy client ID as well and paste it here. In your real life application in production ready, you would probably want to store this in a separate like environment file. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna place it here. And for the authorization params, once the user has been successfully logged in, we want to redirect them back to the application itself. So redirect underscore URE and we want to say window.location.origin. So just redirect them back to our application. And with this, we have configured our odd zero. Nice. And now just make sure to, in your application, you need to add the URL of your application so it's allowed to redirect back there. So on the settings tab, just scroll down and you can find this allowed callback URLs. So just paste your application URL. For this case, it's localhost 3000. And let's just scroll down and click on save. Save changes, like so. And it will take a couple of seconds or actually 30 seconds uh, before they can take effect. But now let me close this application details. Let me open up our app. And now let's see how we can use this odd zero. So in the app component, I'm gonna be implementing this. We're gonna be implementing this odd zero using the hook from the same library so let's import use odd zero from 
auth0 auth react. So this is the hook that we're going to be using. And now let's initialize this hook. This hook gives us quite some functions, but let's start with login first. So let's destructure the object that we're getting back from this use auth0. And let's use the first one, which is login with pop-up. So now in order to be able to log in, let's create a button where we can log in. So let's just create a button here, which will say login and on click. We're just going to call our login with pop-up. So let me copy this function and let's just call it. So now let's save it and let's refresh the application. And now we can click on this login and we get this pop-up. So if you're getting the error, like I am here, what it basically says is that you're not allowing the client to access your application from a specific URL. In this case, this is localhost 3000. So we need to set up that. Go to the application settings once again, and under the settings tab, you wanna scroll down and you wanna find this allowed web origins. And here you wanna set the localhost 3000. Now click on the save on the bottom of this, and this, week, this can take 30 seconds, but usually it's very fast. So now let's close this again and let's refresh the application and let's try once again to see if it works now. So click on the login. Once again, we get this pop-up, but now we're getting this authorized app. So here I'm gonna use this account from the Google and I will just click on the accept, which will authorize my profile. And now we have successfully been logged in, but we cannot see that. So how we can see that is if you go and inspect your browser and if you check on the network tab and let me refresh the application. And if I go to the fetch, we can see that we got our access token. So beautiful. But now we need to change our UI so it's not saying anymore login. So we can do that using the is authenticated flag. So is authenticated will tell us if you are logged in or not. And we can add a new condition here. So we can say, if is not authenticated, we can show this login button. Otherwise, we may want to show logout button. So let's say logout. And here we need to import another function. And that's simply logout. So let me copy this and let's put it here in the logout. So now let's save it. And you can see that we have this logout button now. So if I click on logout, it should just refresh the application and here we get our application redirected to this URL. Now I will get back to the local host and now we have this login again. So the next thing that I want to do is we have this user being logged in, but let's say that we want to show the user information on the page here. So how can we do that? So we can access the user information from the user object here. And here in this return block, we know that user has already been authenticated. So let's create a new div and let's access our user. So first let's create an image and for the source, we can say user.picture. And now uh, let's display username. So we can access user.name. And below that, let's add a paragraph. And here we can say, user.email so to display all the most important information about the user and actually let's log in the user object so you can see what we have at our, at our disposal so console log the user so now let's save this and let me inspect the console and once again let me refresh and let's log in so click on the login and let's use google once again and let's use this call up with sloba gmail account and we have logged in successfully. So let me just zoom in a little bit. And you can see we get the image, we get the uh, first name and the last name, and we get the actual email. And if we open up the console, we can see all the information that user object has. So like email, it, whether it's verified, family name, given name, local name, nickname, picture, and all of that good stuff. Nice. And now let's say that you want to make the actual API call. And that is the actual reason why we are authenticating our application in the first place. So here we're going to uh, import new function. And this function is called get access, not fat, but get access token silently, like so. 
So now let's create another button below this, which will just simulate or actually which will trigger an API call. So let's add this text call API and let's add a new onClick event handler. OnClick. And let's call this method as handle API call. So now we need to create a new function here. We already named it as handle API call. And this is going to be asynchronous function. And like I said, the first thing that we need to do is to get the token. So let's create a new constant. And let's name it token. And now we need to call our asynchronous operation here. And we need to wait for the result. Now let's just console log what we are getting. So let's just console log the token that we are getting back. Token. And let me open up the network tab once again, or the tools, and we can remove this user so it's not confusing us. And let me re refresh, and if I click on the login, once again, we get logged in, and if I click on the call API, we get this token here in the console. And this is the token which you can use to send along with your API request and make them authorized. Now, this is a general token that we are getting for our application, but you can provide a couple of properties to your get access token silently function in order to get a token for a specific endpoint and to give a scope to your user. So we need to provide these authorization parameters here. And there are a couple of things that you need to provide here. The first one is audience. And this is basically the endpoint of your of URL of your endpoint. So like HTTPS and here you would provide like fake API but you would put like the real API endpoint. And the second thing is the scope. So you wanna set the scope for your current user. So we can say read current underscore user. And with this, you can limit what your token is for. So let me save this and let's try once again to make a call. Obviously, we don't have this real API endpoint, so most likely we're gonna get an error. Server is not found. And as you can see, it says, HTTPS fake API version 2 service not found. But this is how you can set the token for a specific API and also to scope your current user. With having said that, this is pretty much all what I wanted to show you in this tutorial and to show you how easy, straightforward it is to use the Auth0 with React and authenticate your applications. So please let me know in the comments if this was helpful and what would you like to see in the next tutorials. And if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com codebitsloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.